Hi everybody, welcome to Novel Thoughts. Today we're going to talk about a book that I am really excited to talk about. I've waited for this book for a long time, and it is The Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss. Now, Patrick Rothfuss wrote The King Cr Killer Chronicle. He's still writing the third book, much to the chagrin of his fans, but the first one is Name of the Wind, and the second one is The Wise Man's Fear, and they're supposedly very good. They are on my list to read, but I'm not going to start reading them until the third book comes out, so I don't have to wait um, to stop in between and wait years and years for the next book. So if you want to read those, check those out. I've heard they're awesome. But this book is very, very different, which is why I'm doing a book review on it, so that people who love Patrick Rothfuss or want to get to know him as an author know what they're getting into when they pick up this book. So let's start with the author's foreword. In the foreword of the book, he specifically says, you might not want to buy this book, which is like the weirdest thing to say up front. But he's right. Um, a lot of people have loved this book and a lot of people have hated it. Why? If we turn to the author's end note, he specifically says, this story is for all the slightly broken people out there. I am one of you. You are not alone. You are all beautiful to me." And I think that that really encapsulates perhaps why this book is so polarizing. Um, a lot of people come into it expecting something like the Kingkiller Chronicle. It isn't. It's not Kavath's story, it's Ari's story. She's a minor character in the Kingkiller Chronicle, and this is all about her. She's the only character in the whole book, and so it has an entirely different feeling to it. Um, second, this is not like a traditional book. There really isn't an overarching like plot. Um, there's very little forward progression. Um, for example, there's over eight pages spent on her making soap. You rarely know why things are, um, if at all. And so in that way, this book can be rather disorienting. So that leads me into the plot and then into a couple points that I think you should know before you start reading this book. This book starts in The Underthing. The Underthing is underneath a university, and it's where Ari lives. She lives in isolation. The Underthing is essentially a series of abandoned rooms and ancient passageways. Ari has named most of the rooms different things, and you'll get to know that. One of the main things to know about Ari is hinted at in the author's end note, and it's the fact that she is broken and that she has secrets. And most of those secrets we aren't going to learn anything about. As you get to know her through the course of the novel, you will come to understand more and more that something has happened to her to create the circumstance that she's in and the way she lives, but we don't learn what that is necessarily unless you're willing to read between the lines. Okay, so now for things to be aware of. The first one is that this book is very esoteric. So esoteric is essentially if you get it, you get it. Um, sometimes it's you have to experience it to understand it. Um, for example, I really didn't understand Ari until one specific moment in the book and then all of a sudden I just understood her and it's because it was something I had experienced. As my husband and I read this book together, he just understood parts of the story and I was like, how did you get that? How did you understand that that's what she was feeling? And he's like, I felt that myself. And that similar thing happened to me. I think at one point in the novel, Ari is having an anxiety attack and I have had anxiety attacks before. And so as she was explaining it, I just got it. So don't feel frustrated if you don't understand what's going on. If you want to talk to other people about the book, they probably understood things you didn't understand. And the moment you get it, there's a very real bond that occurs between you and Ari as a character because you understand mutual suffering in a way. And so just as a heads up, this book is very esoteric. Second point, um, this book has no dialogue. Ari is alone. There is no one to talk to. Um, she does have interactions with this, her surroundings and you essentially, it's like hearing her mind, it's like hearing what she's thinking about, it's like hearing her emotions, um, but just be aware, there's no dialogue. Third point, this book has very little described detail. We know how things feel, but we don't really know what they look like, um, we don't really know why things are happening. So just be aware, you are in a very a live setting, but you don't necessarily know exactly what it looks like, which is a really interesting phenomenon. The next thing to be aware of, I've already hinted at, this book can be relatively confusing because it doesn't have a lot of traditional story elements. I would just say right now, just get rid of the idea that there needs to be a bigger picture. 
don't try to figure it out just experience it and if you if you stumble across something awesome that gives you more insight into what the book is but this book is just insight into who Ari is as a person and oftentimes people aren't really meant to be figured out so I would separate yourself from that necessity of other like normal more normal storylines and just get to know her so another point um a lot of people either come into this book knowing nothing about Patrick Rothfuss' work, like myself, or they come into this book having read some of his work from the King Killer Chronicle, like my husband. So if you have read the King Killer Chronicle, you're not going to know what's going on. If you haven't, you're not going to know what's going on. <laughs> so it's totally okay. It doesn't matter either way. The one thing I would mention, though, is that if you have read the King Killer Chronicle, you may be open to insights that someone who hasn't read it might not know because you understand surrounding context to who Ari is and the world in which she is situated, even though she isn't necessarily interacting with it. Similarly, you might have insights because you haven't read it. That's why it was really fun for my husband and I to read it together because we both came from those opposites and we were able to discuss the ways in which that background had affected how we read the book. So one of my favorite aspects of this book are the drawings. This one's really interesting because it shows how the text interacts with the pictures. This one's I think is just absolutely beautiful and how it works with the, the style of the book. Um, also how it's written is gorgeous. Um, it's very interesting to notice kind of how the sentence structure functions into how Ari thinks. Like she doesn't speak quote unquote normally. And that's kind of, that's kind of fun. You know, there's um, one spot where she says five very similar sounding words. Um, it's on page 11 and she says more faint, faint, feigned, feign. Every single one of those words is spelled differently. And it was really fun to try to figure out how her mind jumped from word to word to word to word. And the fact that they mean different things can build on each other and help us understand the complexity of what she's actually feel feeling. And that's really fun. And I loved how the language worked in this book. So if you're a language nerd or a word nerd, I think this can totally work for you because it did for me. The book also had really interesting chapter titles. I, I read the chapter title having no idea what would come next. After the, book, uh, after the chapter was um, finished, I would go back and read the title and figure out, okay, what does this mean in the beginning? And how do I feel about it now that the chapter is read? And that was super fun. Um, similarly to that, there are a lot of implications in this novel, many, many, many layers, which makes it feel very rereadable. I feel like I could have a different experience every time I read this book, um, depending on what I've experienced in my life since the time I read it before, and that was awesome. So, I mean, honestly, this book may be confusing. It may not be what you're looking for in a traditional storyline. It's nothing like the King Killer Chronicle, but there are so many amazing aspects in this book that I would definitely, definitely recommend The Slow Regard of Silent Things. It is brilliant, and it is an experience. Just know that there are some expectations that you probably shouldn't have going into this novel. The best way to go into this novel is not expecting anything. That way you can just have a clean, authentic experience with this book and with Ari specifically. This book is about a character, not about a story. And so if you know that, I think you stand a chance of really loving this book. I highly recommend it and I hope you enjoyed talking about it with me. I'll see you guys later on Novel Thoughts.